Hello, World Wide Web. I'm Dragon Shadow, the internet personality with the best hair. And it's been a damn long time since I reviewed a Planet of the Apes movie, hasn't it? I covered most every movie in the franchise, and uh, some other things, way back during the first summer special in 2012. Fuck, I've been doing this for a while from rattling off my own shit during the trivia sections of these introductions. But there was another movie made since then, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, in 2014. And for some strange reason, it's been a major request for me to review. Anyway, enough talk about me, let's actually talk about the movie. It's set well after Rise of the Planet of the Apes, and after Caesar led all of the apes into the forest to live under him. They have been doing quite well for themselves, while the human race, on the other hand, is on the brink of extinction. Mainly because of the disease released to the public at the end of Rise of the Planet of the Apes, which resulted in massive casualties, societal collapse, and no more Hawaiian shirt Fridays. On the flip side, the apes are smarter than ever. Still, not to the level seen in every other Planet of the Apes movie made before Rise, but good enough to be able to provide either the help the human race needs to climb back up from the ashes, or crush them once and for all. And at the very least, this review will be notable as the only one in the entire Planet of the Apes franchise that doesn't involve me shouting out, THE SUMMER! OF THE PLANET OF THE APES! Wait. Fuck. Anyway, let's take a look at Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and see what direction the franchise has taken. The opening just catches us up on the important parts of the previous film. There's a terribly deadly plague sweeping the globe, and it's killing the shit out of everyone! Dubbed the simian flu, humans infected appear to suffer about a 100% mortality rate. In record time, practically all of mankind is wiped off the face of the Earth. Then we jump up to check out how the apes are doing, with the ape civilization being led by Caesar, mocap performance played by Andy Serkis. And they're still using sign language. And my ripping software again gave it to me without even the forced subtitles. Don't worry, I actually did go back and re-rip it and forced all the subtitles on it, so I actually know what the fuck they're saying this time. Not that all of it is very important anyway, as here it's just showing the apes are organized and capable of employing complex strategies while hunting wild game. Well, CGI game, anyway. Which almost looks good until they zoom in close to show off how fake it is. Caesar's son, however, doesn't always listen to his commands, and instead of staying put while Caesar makes sure it's safe, he just goes in for the kill. <laughs> California Grizzly has come back from extinction to say, Fuck you, this is my town! Oh, we're already on the flag, bitch! Of course, being in an ape community means they work together, so Caesar rushes down there to fight the bear off. As it's a big fucking bear, and this isn't the easiest task, he calls for help, which results in Koba, played by Toby Kebbell, flying in to save the day. So they're all alive, but Caesar's son was still injured. As just me, or d d does he look a hell of a lot like James Franco? And he does, doesn't he? This can't be accidental, can it? Unlike Franco, though, Blue Eyes, played by Nick Thurston, doesn't care for Caesar's words of wisdom. In fact, it seems he's on friendlier terms with Koba, who proudly tells him the scars will make him strong. We see here that the apes have built a proud civilization, with a school showcasing their basic grasp on language is growing. This is not to say everything is all well and good. Okay, fuck it, I'll check the subtitles. What the hell's he saying? Well, I knew that! When they ascend the ramp, we find out these were Dr. Apes, and Caesar's mate, Cornelia, played by Judy Greer, is in labor. For a few seconds, and boom! Here you go, Caesar, a new CGI baby. Milo! Yes, there are a ton of name drops and references here. If you read the cast of characters, or have subtitles on. Otherwise, you'd never know, as the only apes they ever actually say the names of are Caesar and Koba. To cover the events between movies, Caesar sits down for a hand chat with Maurice, the orangutan, played by Karen Conneval. They discuss the fact that from their forest home, they saw the human civilization decay and fizzle out. According to Maurice, they've been up there for ten years, and there haven't even been any city lights for the last two, so it's likely there simply aren't any humans left. This calls for a correction, so Blue Eyes heads out for a stroll with another ape, Ash, played by Doc Shaw. Once they get far enough... <laughs> They run into the first damn dirty human. Carver, played by Kirk Acevedo. He's pretty much the asshole in the movie, as the first thing he does is pull his gun out and shoot Ash in the chest. This results in the rest of his group running over quickly. No idea why he had separated from them in the first place. And a bunch of apes swooping down, surrounding the area. This leads to sort of a simian standoff until Malcolm, played by Jason Clark, realizes the apes look far more advanced than usual, and lowering their weapons might just defuse the situation. Oh! Holy shit. Does 
imagine how more surprised they'd be if this were an early 90s Disney flick and the apes all broke out in song like, You a damn dumb human, won't you back that ass up? Which they do all the way back to town, with Kobo on their tail. As they reach a security checkpoint, guarding the town from all the, uh, dead people, we meet Dreyfus, played by everyone's favorite old man, Gary Oldman. Did you find it? We need to talk. When you told us we needed to get this monkey off your back, we thought you were being metaphorical. Rather, their mission was to find out if the magical hydroelectric dam that grew there in between movies still worked. They think it might, but there was a problem with a bunch of spear-wielding talking apes. Either way, Malcolm was still impressed with Circus's performance. He was remarkable. Really? Is that what you thought? It's what we saw. Yeah, it's what we all saw. <laughs> Come on, Carver, they're not about to go around saying, yeah, yeah, Caesar looked okay, but being CGI really didn't mesh all that well into the background. Dreyfus doesn't even believe they saw what they said they saw, but tells them not to tell anyone else back at the settlement, because that might cause a panic. I mean, it's not like the apes followed them back to their home, assessed the population, and returned to base with strategies of how to kill everyone in one fell swoop. Or, well, that's exactly what happened, but only because Koba is that adamant about killing the humans before they have a chance to regroup and attack. Of course, Koba's not the one in charge. <laughs> So, ape politicians are selected based on the size of their vocabulary? Well, I'm actually curious, because that would explain why, in the original series, all of the leaders were fucking orangutans. Caesar wants to keep the peace, and avoid going to war with the humans if possible. Mainly because the apes have a pretty good thing going for them, and wars tend to fuck that kind of shit up in a hurry. Koba implores that Caesar be careful, and not so quick to trust the humans. As we all know, he was caged, and subject to countless tests for most of his life. Nevertheless, the next morning, the apes mount up and head out. Passing by the checkpoint, no problem, because it doesn't exist anymore. This means the people in the settlement learn about the issue only as it appears at their front door. Apes! Do not want war! Apes want Firefly Season 2! Even though Malcolm went out to face them, he doesn't say a damn thing about wanting to talk, or even that the humans want peace too, leaving Caesar to just say the forest is the ape's home, so stay the fuck out. Problem is, by staying the fuck out, that means they can't go to the magical dam, meaning they're gonna run out of power in two weeks when the stockpile of diesel dries up. It's cool though, Dreyfus says they'll just find another source of power. There is no alternative power source. That dam is the only option. Wind power? Leftover solar panels? Hell, retrofit a turbine to generate electricity from manpower. I mean, ten years, it's been ten fucking years, and all you have managed to salvage is fucking diesel fuel? Oh, they found some guns, too. They just didn't bother to take most of them down to their settlement on all this time. I'm gonna take some men up to Fort Point. I'm gonna go through the armory. This also confuses the fuck out of me. Why the fuck did they not use the fortress as their home base? What, why have their little settlement city thing far away? What, is it their food source? A water source? Candy? I, I, I don't know, you didn't say anything, and you're showing all these other places that at a glance look like they would be a lot better. This is the kind of thing that it really helps to hammer down. Three days. You're not back in three days. We're going up there, and we're going to kill every last one. How much of this could have been avoided if Caesar and Malcolm had just, you know, conversed? Like, at all. It was right there, but... Eh. Point is, Malcolm is a man on a mission, and must assemble an away team. He's intent on going down there with just himself, Foster, played by John Eyes, and that asshole who shot the ape, Carver, because he's the only one of the group who knows how to fix the dam. Malcolm's girlfriend, Ellie, played by Carrie Russell, thinks this is a pretty dangerous task, though, and her skills as a doctor will certainly help the group. Also, Malcolm's kid, Alex, played by Cody Smith McPhee, what? Uh, tags along for the lulls. Son, it's not safe. I'm safer with you than I am down here. Running headlong into a huge group of potentially violent apes wielding spears is safer than your little kumbaya circle? The fuck? Gotta wonder just how fucked up of a city Dreyfus is running there, if it's comparatively safer when Malcolm rides back over to the Apopolis, immediately getting ganged up by gorillas and dragged off until they reach Caesar, and then he's finally given a chance to speak, so long as he keeps his face to the ground, that is. I need to show you something. So far. Lies. No. No. <laughs> Koba knows this place is boring as fuck, and everything remotely interesting to see is far, far away. 
Of course, Caesar silences the crowd and gives Malcolm a chance to show him what he's talking about. Seems the river the apes situated next to is one that feeds the hydraulic dam, which he very enthusiastically explains is a source of electricity for the people, if he can repair it and reroute the power. Is any of this making any sense to you? Caesar's just looking at him like, Motherfucker, have you tried a solar array? Of course, Caesar realizes right away what he means when he's talking about power, and actually agrees to let the people do their work under one condition. They hand over all the guns, and let the apes smash the shit out of them. Despite the disarmament, tensions are still pretty high, considering Koba doesn't trust the human's work will be any better than when humans chopped him up for experimentation. And Carver doesn't trust the apes are going to let them live anyhow. They already killed off half the planet already. Come on. What? You can't honestly blame the apes. Who the hell else am I gonna blame? You told me I'm not allowed to blame Obama anymore just because he happens to be dead. Well, I still say his presidential poltergeist has been fucking with us this entire time! Besides him, however, everyone else seems very eager to work with the apes and maintain peace. I'm the asshole. Yeah? That is your one character trait, and I wouldn't be surprised if that's how you're actually credited in this movie as well. Because of this mistrust, while the crew works hard to figure out what to do to fix the dam, ignoring the chance to just send one guy back on the spare jeep and let the people know it's okay, they're working peacefully, and don't have to prepare for war with the apes, Koba tells the group he's going hunting, and takes a couple cronies down to the human settlement to investigate what they're up to. Of course, quite a few of them are swarming around the abandoned fort, looting the fuck out of the stockpiled munitions. Kobe even goes in for a closer look, despite how pointless that is, just to wind up being held at gunpoint by two people. People who are really confused and incompetent enough that it should let him know that there's no reason to be concerned. You lost? Trying to get home? Come on! Get out of here, stupid monkey! Oh, no, 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 no. Hey, you know that second faction we found that we're close to war with? Yeah, we found him over here just feeling up one of our rocket launches, but it's cool! It's cool, I think it just was trying to find the bathroom. Speaking of being in deep shit, there's a minor little cave-in at the dam, but it's cool, the apes dig the humans out, which shows just how much they're caring about each other at this point. Even Milo breaks free of Blue Eye's grip just to give our obligatory cuteness overload while they patch Carver up. Right before revealing, Carver had a shotgun the whole time. Hey! I'll kill you! That's a pretty drastic change in tone. Fortunately, the man is disarmed before anyone can be hurt, but the fact that Caesar had one rule and they fucking broke it is enough to make him say the deal is off. Human, leave now! Human, remember to tip valet on way out. Of course, much like when he was told to just stay out in the first place, Malcolm decides not to leave, but instead begs Caesar's forgiveness and asks for one more chance. While going up, they happen to find out that Cornelia hasn't recovered from her labor. Ellie believes she may be suffering from infection, so she volunteers to help her with the magical human medicine. Caesar agrees, but for only one day. I need a little more time. One day! <laughs> April help. But Blue Eyes trusts Koba's judgment at this point a lot more than even his own father, even at the detriment of his own mother's health. Cause fuck humans! Part of this agreement, though, is that they remove Carver from the group. Yeah, that'll keep him. And, and anyway, didn't they say that they desperately needed Carver to fix the dam? Doesn't this little stunt kind of prove that they actually didn't? Why the fuck did they bring him then? Because without him, they're still working on fixing the dam. Also, Koba has returned and demands to speak with Caesar. Not about the human stockpiling weapons. That he keeps to himself. Instead, he just says humans suck and he thinks Caesar loves humans more than apes. Ah! <laughs> Fucking Winston got his ultimate up in this bitch! Which covers Caesar's rebuttal, a series of punches to the face, bringing Koba within an inch of his life, but not finishing him off, of course. I not kill. I but it can beat the ever shit out of one! 
So Koba never actually bothers telling Caesar about the humans at the fort. Instead, he just goes back there, meeting up with the same two people as before, and showing us earlier scenes weren't pointless. See? Without it, that would make it so much harder to explain how Koba could just walk up, acting silly, and slip in close enough to snatch up the gun for another silly joke. <laughs> Double kill! <sighs> Always leaves the audience speechless. This stunt provides Koba and his two cronies with some firepower. Right when the guys back at the dam actually get the power flowing again! There's electricity at the gas station! Which means they never needed cover in the first place. Am I supposed to feel bad about this? At least Koba has a tragic backstory, Gar was just a dick. But on with the good news, the city lights can be seen from the ape's home. And even better, Caesar's mate has recovered completely from her illness. Everything looks like it's gonna be great from here on out. Until Koba shoots Caesar in the chest, framing the humans for it while his cronies burn the ape's home down and fuel anti-human hatred. <laughs> Which is the one and only voice line for Maurice. I'm, I'm pretty sure the actress doesn't actually sound like that. Not entirely sure what happened there. But the point is, it works as the semi-traditional simple word or phrase spoken at just the right time to feel enormous. Also, believing his father to have died at the hands of humans, Blue Eyes falls under Koba's tutelage as they go forth to destroy the human race. First stopping off at that convenient minimally guarded military base and weapon stockpile with enough guns to fuel an army, which Koba just so happens to have. What is it? The apes attack the armory, sir. Damn it, how many times have I told you, stop telling me about these other settlements that need help! And this gives them a warning, although not much, of the incoming horde of apes with assault rifles. The Hollywood kind, with no recoil, that fire forever without any issues, and never need to be reloaded. Taking this into account, Koba takes the opportunity to dual-wield the motherfuckers, tearing up the humans. He's got all the video game powers, as when the humans sent out a motherfucking tank to fight them off, Koba pulls off some GTA 5 shit, taking out the multi-person crew shortly before taking control of the guns and driving all by himself, ramming the gates of the city, giving his army access to the human scum. By morning, Malcolm, in the middle of it all, trips across something that might just change the course of events. And where did Carver get the gun? Why would he do this? Carver was an ape the whole time? Shyamalan style. But since Caesar's still alive, ape didn't kill ape. Therefore, after Koba orders Ash to bludgeon some old people to death, and he refuses, he checks that box right quick. <coughs> ape, not kill ape. Gravity kill ape. The thing is, while the whole place is fucked and Koba has taken over, Caesar knows he can't go back weak, so instead they hide out in a secret location in the city. What are we doing here? It doesn't matter. We just need a place to hide him until we find out what's going on at home. Well, that does make me wonder exactly how much time was supposed to have passed between movies. Maurice said, like, ten years. Box says fifteen. And most of the decay looks like it would be at around the... 20 year mark or so, but that motherfucking tree in the lawn is about 30 years old at least. While they hide so Caesar can recover, Ellie realizes they need to get some medical supplies if he's going to survive. Therefore, Malcolm heads out to find the med kit. Problem is, while he's out on the town, Koba's gangs are roving through the countryside in search of more humans to round up for the People's Zoo. Malcolm almost slips through, but then. Well, there goes our Master of Diplomacy again. Prepare to die. Please don't. Eh, okay. Running into Blue Eyes does give him a chance to bring the ape back to Caesar, letting both of them know that each other are alive. Blue Eyes is still pissed, though, right up until Caesar lets him know it was Koba who shot him. While he must remain hidden while he heals up, Blue Eyes can run interference on Koba's operation, freeing the apes loyal to Caesar from Koba's imprisonment. After a few days, they return with news from the outside. <laughs> No. Actually, Koba has sent for the females and young to be moved from the forest into the city, including Caesar's mate and infant. So, yeah, no more time to heal. Heading out right then, Malcolm leads Caesar through the sewers where they can slip by unnoticed. 
That is, until they are noticed, at which point he shuffles the apes up the stairs. Turns out Drafe has escaped the city along with a couple of assistants, and has been hard at work planning a counterattack. All the apes are up on the tower, and he just so happened to have a big-ass crate of C4 with him just in case. They're gonna take down the whole tower! Blast them all at once. <laughs> Everyone always told me I was wasting my time playing all that Angry Birds. This means while Caesar ascends the tower to face off against Koba for the title of Harry Ape Champion of the World, Malcolm just strolls on by, grabs a rifle, and tries to prevent Dreyfus from blowing the tower up and ruining their last chance for peace. To which Dreyfus responds, peace is kinda fucked anyway considering the radio operator did get through to the army who is sending soldiers down to deal with the ape problem. Which means the whole tower thing is kinda pointless, but not so pointless he can't give his life for it. I'm saving the human race. No! His life. Malcolm had, like, like a curb there, so, you know, fuck the shockwave, he's fine. Hell, the apes aren't doing too bad either, as the explosion damages but hardly destroys the tower. To be fair, Dreyfus never finished planting the explosives, so it's not too hard to imagine. Both Caesar and Koba survive the initial drop, and after a little more back and forth with Koba killing even more apes and wounding others, Caesar manages to get the upper hand, repeating the shot from Rise with Koba killed Mr. Jacobs. Koba reminds Caesar that ape can't kill ape, despite him killing how many apes by now? Well, he's a bonobo. They're the pussyfoot pacifist versions of chimpanzees, but they're still apes. The point is Caesar drops him to his death. But it's cool, he's Caesar, he's allowed to do this kind of shit. Therefore, happy ending! Except, of course, for the fact that Malcolm comes with word that human armies are approaching, and it's not safe here. To which Caesar responds, it won't be safe anywhere now, as apes have started a war with the humans, and the humans will not forgive. Speaking of forgiving, the final shot is of all the apes bowing again to the leadership of Caesar, with one hand raised in a gesture asking forgiveness. And Caesar is poised and ready to accept the fuck out of these apologies! Hardcore submission! Ah. <laughs> yeah, for once, I'd really like to get through one of these reviews without actually thinking of ape sex. Uh, anyway, that was Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. And... It did have its issues, but it was still quite something. Rise of the Planet of the Apes was an interesting experiment that made an entertaining movie, but it didn't really have that otherworldly spark that made the Planet of the Apes series feel like something special. Dawn, however, through the transformation of the world and the evolution of the Apes society, managed to pull that off. Now, it's not nearly as advanced as in the original series, and it's sort of unnatural or anachronistic, considering the apes teach literacy to each other while still having such a difficult time grasping language in the first place. That's not the part that bothers me, though. The issue I have is the lack of a reasonable explanation for why the humans didn't set up base at the fort. A fort is designed to be defensible. I can think of reasons why not, but the problem was the movie didn't give us any. Also, Carver being absolutely needed to fix the dam, until he's not at all, and not only Koba not telling Caesar about the humans having guns, but the two guys not telling anyone about Koba kicking around, where even when the guys are fucking murdered, nobody thinks to increase security at the fort until the apes swarm and take the whole thing over anyway. However, despite these issues, the scope of the scenes is amazing. Apes riding horseback and being in complete control of the new environment showcase what kind of direction this Planet of the Apes series looks to be taking, and it's very impressive. It's hard to say if they'll ever get to the level of the originals with a surprise twist and what have you when you consider the point of the timeline it started from, but nevertheless, this is impressive, entertaining, and not too flawed, coming in at four little bundles of BOOMSTICK out of five. The next one's not supposed to come out until 2017, which probably means I won't get around to reviewing it until about 2030 or so. Oh well, thank you all for watching, I've been Decker Shadow, and remember, apes do not want war. Apes want you to back that ass up.